Here. Okay, pick the spot. Yeah. Mike, when you look at Nebraska, obviously they're improving from where they were early. I think that's adjusting to a new system. But what stands out to you on them as of late? Um, they're explosive. You know, they have multiple tailbacks, multiple receivers, obviously a quarterback that all are big play capable. Um, you know, I think it's the leading re receiving tandem in the Big Ten. A basically thousand yard rusher and, and another guy who can break the game at any point. Quarterback who keeps the plays alive and has a threat with his feet as well as a strong arm. So I, th I think they're, you know, top 15 for sure in the nation in total offense. Their offense is rolling right now. When did you see Martinez start to turn the corner to become a truly capable quarterback? I assume he was earlier in the year, but he's kind of hit another gear, it seems like. I think he's got a lot of confidence right now, as he should. I think uh, once he was perfectly healthy and was the guy full time, it just started to increase exponentially. At the beginning of the year, he was banged up a little bit. Uh, I think finally, maybe week four Purdue game, he was full time, the guy, healthy, and it's, it's grown fast since then. I'm guessing you don't have to worry about your team looking at their record. All you have to do is put on the film, I would imagine, and they can see that this team is going to be difficult to stop. Is that true? It doesn't get any easier. It doesn't seem like there's no doubt about it. You, uh, we have a, a broken tackle film that you're watching. And uh, these guys have made people look silly in space. And um, you watch the explosive play cut-ups. You know, they're, they're near the tops of the league in explosive passes and explosive runs. So there's no doubt. Yeah, you don't have to um, pay attention to anything but watch them on film. And you know, there's a lot of guys who, who make big plays. And, and um, the magic number that we've seen is, is when they've had Eight or more explosive plays, they're winning. Explosive plays being 20-yard pass, 15-yard runs. And uh, you have to limit those with these guys, and that's easier said than done. You guys have played some teams with some pretty talented skill players. I mean, do they have the biggest cross-section maybe at all the positions? Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's it's across the board skill-wise. It's it's two receivers that both have 60-plus catches and, and two tailbacks who are on the field sometimes at the same time who can be game-breakers and make you miss tackles. I mean, they really run through tackles and then... If, a quarterback does it with feet and his arms. You put that all together and you're spread thin. At the same time, obviously they're a challenge, but what, would you say you guys are playing with as much confidence right now as you have all season just based on what you've been able to do against good offenses at Penn State, uh, Purdue, obviously Ohio State last week? Our guy, No, our guys feel good right now. I mean, they're, they're excited about the challenge. They're not, uh, they're not gun shy. They're not lacking confidence. I think they're playing hard. I think that... Uh, they know this is a different challenge and they're excited about it, but I think our defense feels good about where it's at. Mike, it's a unique place out there. It's as loud as they'll ever play anywhere, but you're not getting F-bombed. It's, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's a whole different world. Max Bullis said to me, it's, it's hard to play somewhere where you don't hate them. How do you prepare guys for that? It's funny, I, I, I had never experienced anything like it before I was there the first time too. It is, it's different. And uh, I think what you have to do is you have to realize that that's all part of the game, that how nice they are to you pregame, how they welcome you, how they, you know, are trying to make you feel at home, and they're trying to soften your armor a little bit. I mean, you have to look at it as that's part of the game. And, and uh, if you look at it that way and, and try to feel like they're actually, they're actually disrespecting us by being this nice to us, if you can look at it that way, it's all just good. They're trying to set you up. Trying to set you up. <laughs> Mike, how many, how much, how similar are the, is the Oregon tape from when you guys played them versus what you're seeing from Nebraska now, just with the differences in personnel and time, obviously? A lot of, a lot of, si a lot of similarities in the offense. I mean, Scott Frost's offense. Um, I would say he's running very much the same offense with five years worth of evolution. You know, and that's what you're looking at. You're looking at, uh, any offense over the course of five years is going to evolve and try to play the strengths of specific players that you have on the roster at that time. But you do see a lot of the same things, yeah. He the other day said, you know, talked about facing you guys those two years and said, looking at your defense now, some similarities, but there are some things that's changed. I'm wondering what you could, how you would describe the, you know, the changes you guys have made in the last four, five years. I think our defense and its evolution, and his offense and its evolution, it's, it's similar. I mean, it is the same defense. We're running the same defense, but we have five more years worth of data and experience as coaches and, and have brought in new coaches over the past five years to bring their input. And, 
And that's where it is. You take advantage of the new knowledge that you have and add some new things here and there. I'm sure they've done the exact same things. Mike, your former, when your former cohorts, Pat Narduzzi won the Braille's Award a few years ago, and you're one of the finalists for that. What would, I know you're focused on the season right, right now, but what would that mean to you for, for an award like that if that were to happen? Come from a coaching family, so I mean, it, it is a big deal. I mean, that is a big time award, I think, that my dad, my uncle would say the assistant coaches awards are a bigger deal than the head coaches award. Just like as an assistant coach, I'd say, hey, those player awards are a bigger deal than any coaching awards could be. So um, it's a big deal. Um, it's an honor, but we just got to keep playing ball. That, that award is won by the guys on the football field, not by the coaches. Mike, how much pride as a coordinator do you have in your defensive staff? I mean, you're you look at Paul and all that he's done with your DBs with all the injuries, but really all of them, right? it's got to be pretty special to have a staff underneath you like them. we got a great group of guys, and I think they feel the exact same way. we got a great group of guys. The chemistry is good. The, uh, the love for each other is there. Even though there's a couple guys that are there for the first year, we feel like we've been around each other for a long time. So, yeah, obviously wouldn't trade this group of guys. It's a great group of guys. You mentioned about the receivers, uh, the challenge for Josiah and Justin. I guess looking at Josiah, how has he played since he's come back? I mean, do you feel like he just jumped right back in it? I knock on wood when I say this, but you don't feel like he's been gone. I mean, you feel like he's right back. I think that um, our training staff was able to keep him out the right amount of time where we weren't forcing him back in the action before he was ready to. And certainly a corner position is not a position where you want to limp back into the action. You need to be ready to go. And I think they got him to the point where he truly was ready to go. We might have even held him out um, longer than we needed to, but at this point, that's great because he's playing well and he's feeling well. Do you guys need a guy like Josh back to add that depth there? Or? We want a guy like Josh back. So yeah, playing, we want thought, a guy uh, like. Do you think he was playing pretty well? Before? Yeah, he was playing very, very well. He was playing really well. We were really happy with the way he's playing. So I'd say, yeah, we'd love to have a guy like Josh back, but do we need? I mean, that's the thing about football. You need to perform with who you have. Again, I know you get wrapped up in the season and all that, but do you think at all? These last couple of weeks about freshman guys that maybe might see a few snaps the next couple of weeks just because you can, you, you, I guess. You look at the depth and, and you do think about that, but you also realize every one of these games is a battle from start to finish. We never uh, make them anything other than that. And it's hard even to jump in on kickoff team if you haven't been the guy repping that for 10 weeks. You know, because there's game planning and learning even on the kickoff team. So there's guys we've talked about. There's no doubt about it. But um, you have to sort of bite the bullet. And sometimes you need to get Coach D'Antonio or, or, or whoever other coach is involved and say, you know what, we just got to do it. So we have those discussions, but they're hard steps to make because uh, those guys have been part of the Orange Crush, our scout team, most of the year, and they haven't been repping it. It's going to be a, a different way to go about it, though, this year now that you can. Uh, we'll Something probably you didn't get to do before. We'll probably get better at doing that. In the future, we'll probably, those guys that you think might be those types of guys, find ways to get them reps throughout the year, just preparing for the last four games of the year. But uh, being as it's something new and different, we probably haven't done a great job of that. So now you have those discussions. But uh, but like I said, it's hard to do when they haven't been practicing it. What did you think of Kenny Willick's this game? He's had a good season, and it just seems like it keeps improving. What's enabled him to now take it to another stage? What did you think of this game Saturday? You know, it was awesome. He played in the backfield, uh, like I think like he did in the Michigan game. And what's amazing is he has a, a nonstop motor always. So you wonder how he finds an extra level when an extra level is needed, because you think he's playing at the absolute top motor level every snap. And then somehow he finds another step, and that's what's most impressive. I know Coach D'Antonio always says, OK, raise your hand as high as you can. OK, now reach higher. Somehow, even when you think you're all the way up, there's a way to reach a little bit higher, and Kenny does that. What about Jacob opposite him? Um, One more time? Jacob opposite him. He's kind of taken a lot of those snaps at the opposite end. I mean, what have you seen in him the past few weeks to kind of maybe you solidify know, I, that? I, I think his confidence has really grown where he can play faster without having to think through it. And that's sometimes <laughs> always the issue you run into with younger players where they're having to think through everything they do. And he's. He's starting to cut it loose a little bit, and, and I do think regardless of who's at the other end, a little bit more attention is focused on Kenny, which uh, hopefully allows those guys to play for you. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Mike.